Montessori language is just amazing. The way Dr. Montessori has broken down language uh, lessons for children into easy steps, into easy areas, just blows my mind away. And what I would like to do is take you through a series of videos to introduce you to the different parts of Montessori language so that you too can easily implement this at home with your children. And the beauty of Montessori language is that a lot of this material can easily be made at home. If you ask me, if you're a creative person, you could pretty much make everything. So we're going to start first. This is the first in our series and today we'll be talking, we'll do a little introduction to Montessori language and then I'm going to focus on the pink series today, which is the very first area of Montessori language. Let me introduce you to our Montessori language area. It's right here behind me and Montessori language is broken up into four areas. The pink series, the blue series, early grammar and the green series. And without me saying anything, you can look at the colors behind here and you would get pretty much an idea of the materials. Everything you see here in pink, these first three shelves, would be the pink series. Down here we can see it's blue. This is the blue series. Over here, these boxes, the animals, that's our early grammar. And over here, we would have the green series. But what does this all mean? What is the pink series and what is the blue series? This is just Greek and Latin, right? That's what I'm here to do. We are focusing today only on the pink series. The Montessori pink series is where we start with language with the children. The first thing we start with are the insets for design. I'm just going to tip this a little bit so you can have a look at it. Okay, now these activities help children to develop, further develop their pincer grip, to develop an understanding of formation of letters, of where to start, where to stop, making lines, uh, making curves, uh, learning how to form the different shapes that are required of letters. Children love the insets for design. They really enjoy it. They can do many, many at one time. You'll see they'll take one and do another and another. Don't fret, don't worry. This is a really good activity for them because it's helping them to learn to enjoy writing, okay? It's helping them to develop that focus and that concentration. And then when it comes to actually writing letters, you will see this will make a very big difference in making it easier for them. The next step would be to introduce the children to the sandpaper letters. Now I've done a video on the sandpaper letters and I'm going to add a link to that in the comments below, in the description below. So if you want to learn how to present the sandpaper letters, you can click on that and watch that video. We use the phonics system in Montessori and it's really important for you as a parent or as a teacher to, to really understand and know the phonic sounds very, very well. As a teacher, this is the one thing I'm super strict about because if you don't learn the phonics well, then you're going to teach it in a wrong way to your children and then they're going to struggle. So we really need to get it right. Um, it doesn't matter what song you use or what book you're using to teach it because the sounds are all the same, but do make sure that you get it right. If you're looking to learn, uh, there are a lot of videos. One of the uh, ones that are our favorite is called Ants on the Apple. You can do a YouTube search and look for that and sing it along, learn the phonics sound so that it becomes easy for you to teach the children. Once our children are familiar with the phonics sounds, we then want to start taking them into building words. We have a material called the Large Movable Alphabet, which we use first to recognize sounds, and then we start building words. Now, in the pink series, everything, any word that we build or we read is composed of only two or three letters. This is key for you to remember. If it is in the pink series, it can only be two or three letters and it must be phonetic. Now, if you see a word that has four letters, 
automatically it does not belong in the pink series okay so basically words in the pink series are what we call CVC words consonant vowel consonant um, this does not necessarily mean that every CVC word is phonetic there are some exceptions to the rule and I'm going to talk about those with you any word that has a vowel plus Y is non phonetic for example guy or bay or toy these words are non phonetic because the middle vowel does not follow the same sounds as per the phonic sound uh, the phonic song and the phonics that we learn any word with mid with a uh, uh, vowel plus W is non phonetic such as row um, raw uh, um, few these words are non phonetic any word with vowel plus R is non phonetic such as fur such as her such as far these words are non phonetic if you see a double vowel such as the word tea I drink my tea TEA it automatically two vowels together it's non phonetic okay when you see a vowel at the end of the word such as ate I ate my breakfast or ice there is ice in my drink these words are non phonetic as well so these rules are really important for you to remember because otherwise you get very confused and you make mistakes so now the first thing we want to do is teach children how to build words Maria Montessori said word building okay which is also like writing comes easier to children than reading and so that's where we must start because the word building is coming from within them so what we do is we have the pink object box and the, these are little boxes with objects in them that are three letter CVC words that are phonetic for example Sun I have a hat I have a zip and what we do is we use the large movable alphabet to help the children build these words there's no reading involved as yet it's just building up words and we do the same thing when the children have worked with the object boxes then we move on to working with the picture boxes we can have up to six object boxes in our classroom that would be an object box with middle vowel a an object box with middle vowel e I O U and a mixed box okay from there like I said we can go to using picture boxes so it's the same activity but this time we are building words using pictures with the LMA once the children have mastered that and they've worked through a large number of boxes they've gotten enough practice that's when we know that they're ready for reading and then we would take them to these same boxes and at the bottom of the box we have word tags so the children identify these same objects but this time they read and they match the correct word tag to the object they do this with objects and they do this then with pictures now our goal is to get the children to read a book by the end of the pink series my child should be able to read a storybook and they would be about three and a half maybe four years by then which is you know a really uh, good accomplishment for them it makes them feel good about themselves so now that children are reading words you know loosely I want to try and centralize it into one place and that's what we do with the pink picture card all our pictures are in one place and we've got the word tags at the back in a little envelope here we're just very slightly making it a little bit more difficult for children and then the next step would be to have word lists now there's only one picture and the first word matches to that and we're taking the the crutch of a picture away from the child they're just reading words and now it gives me a chance also to move to more um, words that are not nouns I can now have verbs I can have adjectives things that I didn't have objects or pictures for I can start expanding their vocabulary even further okay 
We then have something called the mystery box where we have a little box with papers and we introduce the children to reading silently because we don't want them to always read aloud. Eventually when they're reading a book, we want them to be able to read quietly. And then we have the sight words, okay? Sorry. We want to teach our children some sight words because in order to make a sentence, we've got to have an article and uh, an article is not a phonetic word. For example, the words the and the word um, a are things that we use to teach, uh, to help the children to be able to read a sentence. And we teach this using the three period lesson. Now my child has learned so much, I want to take them to reading sentences. We call these attached sentences. There's a picture and attached to it is a sentence that talks about this picture. So first of all, we discuss the picture and then we ask the child to read. We introduce them to capitals, we introduce them to full stops. We want to make the sen sentence interesting. I could have the same sentence and say, uh, the the bun, you know, the jam is in the bun. But I want to expand their vocabulary and put red in there so that they're reading even more words. When they've worked through that, now we can do a little matching activity with the detached sentences. So we have pictures which we identify and then the children have to read these simple sentences and match it to the correct picture. So this becomes a teeny bit challenging. You can see how very gradually we've taken them to expanding their reading abilities. And then finally, now they're ready for a storybook. And the storybook will be very simple. If you're making this, you don't have to worry about it being literature or something fancy. It's just repetitive. Bob is a dog, Tim is a cat, Bob is on a mat, Tim is on a rug, we're just making it simple. The idea is that when a child reads a book, they feel empowered. They feel like they're doing something that only grown-ups do. Their self-esteem goes up and they feel, wow, I can do it. And they're driven to learn even more. So that's why we get them to the stage of reading a book. In traditional schooling, it works a little bit differently. The children have to learn all the sounds, then they have to write all the sounds, then we teach them four letter words, then we teach them longer words, and then we go to a book. By the time they're reading a book in traditional or conventional schooling, they're already over five. But you can see that that doesn't have to be the case. They can start reading right when they are three and a half to four years old. So there you have the pink series in a nutshell. Do be very wary of your phonic sounds and the exceptions to the rule because this is where I find a lot of people make mistakes. If you have any questions and you're confused about the pink series, I would love to get your questions and I would love to help you out. So drop those questions in the comments box and I can come back and help you out. And stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, push the bell notification because very soon we will come back with a video about the blue series, the next step in language. And until we meet again, have a beautiful day.